Let's take a look at the quiz and the mistakes or issues that came up for some of you and hopefully learn them properly so that we can move on to perpendicular and parallel lines. Question one asks you to find the equation of the line passing through two negative three and seven comma seven. Now we've gone through the steps that are required for this. I'm gonna show you an image afterward, but in the first step you have to say, find the slope. And in this case, you subtract backwards the second y, which is seven, minus the first y, which is negative three, so double negative, over the first, the second x minus the first x, gives you 10 over 5. Now, a couple of you guys forgot to reduce, made the next part of it a little more difficult. The next part of this, step 2, is to take y equals ax plus b, but you replace the a with the slope, and then you take a point to replace in there. Now, I've said this a couple of times. Try to choose the point that's going to be the least confusing. So we try to avoid negatives. If there's a 0, we take that point. But this one is especially nice because 7, even if you get them backwards, it won't make a difference. And I'm going to get 7 is equal to 14 plus b. And this step is always going to be the same. Leave the b on the right. Bring the other term to the left side. And it's going to be opposite for your value of b. And then don't forget to write your answer at the end is going to be y equals negative, uh, sorry, positive 2x minus 7. And just a reminder also, okay, uh, I forgot the number of these steps. This is step 3, and this is step 4, and that's step 5. Um, let's take a look at the picture, right? Does this look like it has a positive slope? Yeah. Is it a slope of 2? Maybe. Does it look like it's going to cross through negative 7 on the y-axis? Yeah, it does. So you can check really quickly um, by making a sketch. Question 2 is asking you to find the slope of the picture. Now, when I give you the picture, especially in a case where I give you the two intercepts, realize you have this gift right away that this guy here is a y-intercept. That's your b-value. And yeah, you could take the ordered pair 0, 12, and the ordered pair 7, 0, and work out the slope that way. But it's much faster to just do the rise, which is negative 12, and the run, which is positive 7, so that your slope, rise over run, is equal to negative 12 over 7. And your y-intercept, given in the graph, is equal to 12. So your answer, negative 12 over 7x, plus 12. was supposed to be a very easy two marks for everybody. Question three and four are talking about vertical and horizontal. And so I set up a little bit of a diagram on the side to make the work easier and remind you, in case you forgot to memorize these, right? A vertical line is always x equals a number, and a horizontal line is always y equals a number. Making a quick sketch, sketch will show you, because if I make a vertical line here, every ordered pair on that is going to be 6 comma something. And so what's going to be the same? The x values are all going to be the same, and they're all going to be equal to 6. So that's your answer. The x's are all going to be 6. And in a similar way, when you're doing the horizontal line here, going through 9 comma 3, all of the ordered pairs that you see there this might be, let's say, 3, 3, and this other one might be 6, 3, all have y values that are equal to 3. And so that's our equation. And it's kind of weird because it looks like just an answer, but this is really the description of the line that we have graphed. Next task required you to know how to isolate the y because that's going to find out the slope and the y-intercept pretty quickly. We'll worry about the x-intercept another time or at least after we set this up. So the 9y is going to stay on the left, and the negative 5x and 15 are going to be on the right. Remember to try to keep those equal signs lined up. You divide both of the sides, all of the terms, by the coefficient of y, and you're going to get y equals 5 ninths x, we like to write that beside, plus, don't forget to reduce, 5 thirds. And you now have your y-intercept, which is 5 thirds, your slope, which is 5 ninths. 
Now to try and get the x-intercept out of this is a little more tricky, and I would actually go back to the original and say 9y plus 5x equals 15, and you get your x-intercept by making the y equal to 0. So this term is going to disappear, and you'll be left with just 5x equals 15, which you can reduce or um, isolate the x, and you get x equals 3. Incidentally, you could have found the y-intercept the same way by making x equals 0, right? And then you would have got 9y plus 5x equals 15, and that would become 0. So you would be solving 9y equals 15, and you'd have to divide both sides. And you would still come up with um, 5 over 3 for your y-intercept. Moving along to the last question with graphs. And this is where some of you guys, I don't know what to tell you, you have to learn the easy way. So I'm going to do the first one that I find most, um, oh, what happened there? Uh, y equals 1 half x plus 8. So I'm going to find 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And it's going to be going on a slope of up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2, up 1 over 2 and you do the reverse. And I could put the whole screen right across as dots. And eventually, um, you do have to pull out the ruler and make your graph, your line, going through all those points. For the second one, uh, because I've, or actually the first one, because I've got it in the standard form, the method that I've asked you guys to use is to just plug in x equals zero to find y, and then plug in y equals 0 to find x. So if I plug in x equals 0, I'm going to wind up with 3 times 0 plus 6y equals 24. And then that's just going to be 6y equals 24. And y is equal to 4. If I'm plugging in for y equals 0, I would wind up with 3x plus 6 times 0 equals 24. And that's going to be 3x equals 24. x is equal to 8. That's a 4, not a y. And then plotting those two intercepts, 0, 4 is there. And 8, 0 is there. Count properly. And then connect them. And you can maybe predict that there's going to be another couple of nice points in there. Like that one's going to be exactly in between. And there's all these, because the slope is equal to a half. Uh, sorry, the slope is actually equal to negative a half. Connecting the line, and you have to do your graph so accurate that if you were to look at it, you could actually see where the x and y intercepts would occur. And in this particular case, because there's two lines, uh, where the point of intersection would be between those two lines, which happens to be at 4, 6, which is one of those ways that I can check to see that your work is done properly. And we're going to work more on intersection points later. Hopefully this helps for you to understand it all, review it a couple more times, and make sure you learn this. Um, we need all of these skills for working with parallel and perpendicular lines.